Oh, my God, I'm going to say, 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 I'm Krishna is strategic. He's not random. He didn't just create you and say, well, let's see what he can do. Let's see what happens. No, he's precise. He's intentional down to the smallest detail. When Krishna, God laid out the plan for your life, he studied it carefully. He thought about what you would need. He thought about where you need to go, what it would take to get you there. And he matched you with your world. He gave you the talent, the creativity, the strength. He packed your bag, so to speak. You're the right size. You have the right looks, the right personality, and the right family. You didn't get shortchanged. You're fully loaded, completely equipped for the race that's been designed just for you. Now, our message today is quit wishing you are something different. Oh, if I had a better personality, I could do something great. If I came from a different family, if I weren't so small, if I were a little more intelligent, our encouragement tonight is have a new perspective. If you needed to have been taller, Krishna would have made you taller. If you needed a different personality, he would have given you one. If you needed to be another nationality, then you would have been another nationality. Here's our message. God doesn't make mistakes. You're not faulty. You've been fearfully and wonderfully made. When God created the universe, he flung the stars into the sky. He said, those were good. When he created the mountains, the oceans, and the sunset, he said, that was good. But when Krishna created Manusha, man, and he saw how magnificent he was, how strong, how attractive, and how talented, he said, these men and women are very good. 8,400,000 species of life. Man at the top. Why? Because he's created in the image of God. Every man is created in order to reflect the talent, the creativity, and the strength of his heavenly Father. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hari Hari. Krishna didn't say the solar system was very good. He didn't say the Rocky Mountains were very good. But he called each and every one of you a masterpiece. And when the creator of the universe says, you are very good, that means that you're just right. Now don't go around feeling short change as though somehow you're lacking. You didn't get enough. You can't do what others can do. If you didn't get what somebody else has, it means you don't need it. So quit comparing yourself to others. Just run your own race. Be who Krishna created you to be, an original. You have something to offer the world that nobody else has. So let your gifts shine. Show your talent, show your personality, show your style. We don't need an imitation. We don't need a copy. We need the original you. Problem is that when you want what somebody else has, when you wish you had their looks, their talent, their personality, here's the truth. If you actually had it, it wouldn't be a blessing. It would be a burden because it wasn't designed for you. The reason it works for them is because it fits them. They're walking in their anointing. You're not anointed to be someone else. As long as you're trying to be like them, you're going to be frustrated. The anointing in your life is to be who God called you to be. Develop some confidence in what you have. Next level thinking says you have the right looks, the right talent, the right personality. It may not be what somebody else has, but here's a newsflash. You're not running their race. In the Bhagavad Gita, third chapter, 35th verse, Shreyan Shradama Bhigana Paro Dharma Shandash, Shradana Bhigana Paro Dharma Bhayavadam. 
Krishna is saying to Arjuna, it is far better to discharge one's prescribed duties, even though faultily, than another's duties perfectly. Destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging another's duties, for to follow another's path is dangerous. I've learned it's easy to be me. Why? I don't have to pretend. I don't have to perform. I don't have to get the approval of others. It just takes all the pressure off. I can just relax, be myself. When you're comfortable with who you are, when you're not trying to impress people, when you're not trying to be something that you're not, then your own uniqueness will come out. You'll be more creative. Your talent will shine in greater ways. The right people will show up. Why? Because you step into the anointing on your own life. You are powerful when you're you. And here's the key. Nobody can beat you at being you. You can be a better you than anybody else in the world. You have an advantage. And what's that advantage? You were anointed to be you. <laughs> Too often, when we see someone who's more talented, more successful, better looking, more blessed, perhaps, according to our perspective, we tend to be envious and think, why can't I do that? I want what they have. If we're not careful, thinking like that before long, we'll end up subtly competing with them, trying to outperform them, outdo them, outwork them, outearn them, outdrive them. I heard the story of two paddle boats. They left Memphis at the same time traveling the Mississippi River down to New Orleans. They traveled side by side. Sailors from one vessel made a few remarks about the slow pace of the others. Well, words went back and forth, tempers flared, challenges were made, the race began. The competition became vicious as the two boats roared through the deep south. One boat began falling behind, didn't have enough fuel. There had been plenty of fuel for the trip, but not enough to pour it on for a race. As this boat began dropping back further and further, one young, enterprising sailor took some of the ship's cargo and tossed it into the ovens. And when the sailors saw that the supplies burned as well as the coal, they fueled their boat with the material that they'd been assigned to transport. They ended up winning the race, but burning their cargo. Now God, has entrusted cargo to us on this journey of our lives. Children, spouse, friends, our job is to do our part seeing that the cargo reaches its destination. Now the problem can be that you're competing with someone else who's not even in your race. That race is specifically designed for you. You're not in competition with your friends, with your neighbors, your coworkers. The only competition that we have is with ourselves, to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. The key is not to get distracted trying to keep up with someone you are never supposed to keep up with. When you understand that you are fully loaded for the race that God designed for you, instead of competing with people, you will celebrate people. The right attitude is, they may have something I don't, but that's okay. I'm not running their race. I'm equipped for my destiny. And when we start competing with people, we lose focus, we get distracted. And before long, we're wasting time on things that are not moving us towards our purpose. Someone said, successful people are so focused on their goals they don't have time to look around to see what everybody else is doing. Makes sense, doesn't it? Run your race, and when someone passes you by, don't be intimidated, be inspired. Krishna did it for them, he can do it for you. 
you can't celebrate people who are further along than you, then you're never going to get to where they are. You have to pass the test of being happy for people who have passed you up. There is a tendency to be jealous, to start finding fault, being critical, saying they don't deserve it. They're not that talented. Let me tell you some bad things I heard about them. Don't fall into that trap. Krishna is showing them favor. Doesn't mean that he can't show you favor in your turn. You have to simply pass the test and be happy for them. Here's a story for many years. Sir Walter Scott was the leading literary figure in the British Empire. Nobody could write as well as he. Then the works of Lord Byron, a youngster, began to appear. Their greatness was immediately apparent. One day, an anonymous critic praised Byron's poems in a London paper. He declared that in the presence of these brilliant works of poetic genius, Sir Walter Scott could no longer be considered the leading poet of England. Who do you think that anonymous critic was? That's right, it was Sir Walter Scott himself telling the truth, celebrating somebody else. And when you see someone who's blessed, who's rising higher, it's easy to think, well, they just had a lot of good breaks. What you might not realize is that the favor on their life didn't come without dues, without pain. The promotion didn't come without struggles, without them fighting off discouragement, without them pressing forward when they felt like giving up. You don't know what it took for them to get where they are today. Sometimes we come in at the end of the movie. We see everything working out, happy, blessed, successful. What we didn't see was the middle, the tears, the lonely nights, the struggles. Be big enough to celebrate what Krishna is doing in others' lives. Don't miss your destiny because you're being sour that someone passed you up. Their success is not stopping what Krishna wants to do in your life. He didn't use up all of his favor on them. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. So each one of us has to decide, are we going to waste our time competing with others, spend all of our energy trying to keep up, or are we going to celebrate what Krishna has done in others' lives? Your true friends are those who come to you when you're down, when you've made a mistake. They won't gloat. They're going to show up to give you a supportive arm, a helping hand, an encouraging word. I heard of a wonderful story that happened during the Special Olympics. Nine children lined up for the 100-yard race. The gun sounded, and the race was on. But only a few yards into the race, one of the children fell down on the ground and began to cry. Now, these challenged children didn't understand the world's concept of competition, getting ahead, and taking advantage when your competitor was down. The other eight children stopped running came back to their fallen comrade. A young girl with Down syndrome kissed him, brushed him off. The other children lifted him up together, and arm in arm, they crossed the finish line. The audience rose to their feet in thunderous applause. There was not one winner. There were nine winners. (laughs) And for a moment, these children showed us what Krishna, God's kingdom, is like. They challenged the world's concept that first place is everything. And your true friends are going to be those who show up to celebrate you. They're happy when you're promoted. They're applauding you when you move into that new house. You heard the say, it's lonely at the top. That's because not everybody can handle your success. Too often, people get jealous, envious, and critical. Let not that be us as devotees. Let's pass the test. When somebody passes you by, give them a high five. Keep running your race. Don't look to the left or to the right. 
keep being who Krishna made you to be. If you're trying to be something that you're not, it's going to be frustrating, and there's no grace for that. It's going to be a constant struggle, always uphill. Most of the time, if you think about it, we're perfectly happy with our life until we start comparing, isn't it? Duryodhana is a great example. He had a royal birth. He had massive wealth. He had rulership. He had beautiful wives. He was in the top 1% of the top 1%. But we all know that when he compared his birth, his wealth, his wife to the Pandavas, he was no longer happy with his lot. Now he was envious, jealous. And he basically spent his whole life trying to be the Pandavas. When all he had to do was realize, I'm not blessed. In the same way the Pandavas are blessed, I'm blessed in a different way. Esau, he told a fable of an eagle who was envious of another eagle who could fly better than he could. And one day the bird saw a hunter with a bow and arrow and he said to him, I wish you would bring down that eagle up there. And the man said he would if he had some feathers for his arrow. So the jealous eagle pulled one out of his wing. That arrow was shot, but it didn't quite reach the rival bird because he was flying too high. So the first eagle pulled out another feather for another arrow, and then another and another until he had lost so many feathers that he himself could no longer fly. Now the shrewd hunter took advantage of the situation, turned around, and very easily killed the helpless bird. Let me tell you that if you are envious of others, the one you will hurt the most by your actions is yourself, your spouse, and your own loved one. We have to understand the sovereignty of God. It may not seem fair to us, and it doesn't always make sense to us, but Krishna's ways are unlike our ways. Scripture talks about how Krishna is given to each person different gifts, different talents. Everybody does not get the same, but what he gave you is exactly what you need to fulfill your destiny. Whether you're an Arjuna who can defeat 10,000, or whether you're a Duryodhan who can defeat 1,000, the right attitude is, I'm just gonna take what Krishna's given me and make the most of it. Don't compete, don't compare, just run your race. Now here's a crucial point. It takes a mature person to realize what you are not. Knowing what you're not will help you stay focused on becoming who you are. Srimad Bhagavatam informs us that 5,000 years ago, after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, Kali, the personification of quarrel and hypocrisy, came into the world through the immaturity of a young Brahmin boy named Sringi. Sringi heard of a slight offense performed on his father by the king Parikshit at the time. He was immature and feeling a sense of competition and comparison to the ruling class the personality of Kali was able to enter into this young boy's body, cause him to utter the following curse. This was the beginning of the current age of quarrel and hypocrisy. The boy said, just see how irreligious these kings are compared to the pious Brahmins, enriching themselves like crows. They imagine they are our competitors. Who's making the comparisons and who's feeling the competition here? Yes, while they are nothing but dogs keeping watch at the door, the kings are only to guard the Brahmins like watchdogs. On what ground is this Parikshit who is supposed to stay at the door allowed to enter the house of my father and eat from the same place? I shall punish this upstart king by cursing to die by the bite of a snake bird within seven days. When Shringi's father, Samika, to whom the so-called offense had been directed, heard of what his son had done and of his son's envy of the king, he was very, very unhappy. Unlike his son, 
Samiki Rishi glorified and celebrated the royal class. He said, because of my son's disrespect for the monarch, from this day on, sin will overtake us, causing great social disorder. Without a strong administrative class, wealth will be stolen by thieves. Among the people, there will be murder and molestation, abuse of women and animals. Without a king, the righteous civilization of human progress will systematically be vanquished. And there will arise unwanted population on the level of dogs and monkeys. The protector of religion, the king, is to be highly celebrated. See the difference between the son, immature son, and the father who says the king is to be celebrated as a direct first-class devotee of the Lord. The king should never be cursed for a minor offense. Now, would you agree with me? There will always be pressure to be this, to be that, to be the other. Everyone will have opinions. Down in your heart, we do know who we are, don't we? We can't let outside pressures and other people squeeze us and to become something we're not. And when you come to the end of your life, you're not going to answer to people. You're going to answer to Krishna. People may mean well, they may love you, but if it doesn't bear witness in the core of your heart, you have to be bold enough to say, this is who I am. Here's the key. You don't have to have a great gift from Krishna in order for him to use you in a great way. If you'll just be faithful and appreciative of the gift you have, develop it, grow it, sharpen it, learn more about it, improve it, that gift will open doors to places you've never even dreamed. Don't discount your gift. Don't minimize it. Even if it seems small to you, when you compare it to others, it may seem insignificant. But can I tell you, there's nothing ordinary about you. You have the fingerprints of God all over you. He made you in his image. He garlanded you with his favor. You have royal blood flowing through your veins. Don't believe the lies. There's nothing special about you. You're not as talented as your brother. You don't have an attractive personality like your friend. None of that matters. Krishna controls the universe. He can take your one talent, build around it. If we use what we have to the glory of God, he will take our meager gifts and multiply them, use them in ways that we never dreamed possible. Someone said, our life is Krishna's gift to us. What we make of it is our gift to Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari, 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 Rama, Hari, Rama, 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 Hari, Hari. And that's not even the end of the equation. Krishna takes what we offer and he adds even more. The composer, Rossini, used to go out into small villages in Italy, which couldn't afford to put on an opera. He would write an opera, which the people of each village could perform. One summer, he additioned all of the talent in this small village. And the only woman who could possibly be a leading lady was limited to only one good note, a middle B flat. Rossini was not discouraged. He went right ahead, wrote the opera in which the leading lady only had one note to sing. But what he did was he surrounded that middle B flat with such beautiful harmony that when she sang her one note, it was like an angel from heaven. Similarly, when we offer our meager gift to Krishna, Krishna is capable of moving heaven and earth to showcase that one talent. There's something Krishna has given each and every one of you, and as ordinary as it may seem, when Krishna breathes on it, you'll rise beyond your abilities. You'll be promoted beyond your talent. You'll go places where you didn't have the experience. Suddenly, the door opened. Suddenly, you're singing that opera. Suddenly, you have a new temple. Suddenly, people are celebrating you. And too often, we look at others. And we think how great they are. We put them on a pedestal. But Krishna put greatness in you. He's given you gifts, you creativity, you dreams, 
You're not supposed to live and die and nobody knew you were here. There's something significant about you. Something that will cause you to stand out to the point where years from now, people will look back and say, you and you and you and you and you made this world a better place. We just have to do our part, stir up those gifts, stir up that faith. Don't get so caught up in celebrating others that you don't recognize there's much in you to be celebrated. Krishna is saying to you tonight, there's greatness in you. It's much bigger than you think. Don't let circumstances talk you out of it. Though you may not see how it will work out, Krishna has ways of promoting you that you've never dreamed of. One touch of his favor can catapult you to the entire next level. What Krishna has put into you, he's going to bring to pass. You're pregnant with destiny. It's not going to come through others. You are going to shine. You are going to excel. You are going to be promoted. You are going to be celebrated. Why? Because you're fully loaded. Your bags are packed. You're not at a deficit. You're not lacking. You're full of potential, full of favor. You may not see how it'll happen. Get ready, it's a new day. Things are changing in your favor. What's been shut up in your spirits being released. Dreams, potential, promotion, healing, abundance, vindication, breakthroughs. The fullness of your destiny is being released in this life and next life. You go back to home, back to Godhead. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari.